My name is Rick Bangs and I'm a five-year survivor of bladder cancer. I was diagnosed with muscle invasive high-grade or aggressive bladder cancer. At the time of my diagnosis, I made a commitment that some good would come of this. And I had the opportunity two years later to participate in the design, development, and delivery of clinical trials on bladder cancer. I work as the patient advocate for SWAG, which is a member of the National Clinical Trials Network. I'm here to talk to you today about an important trial and one that you have an opportunity to participate in. This trial seeks to understand whether removing more lymph nodes or fewer at the time of the removal of your bladder is the right treatment. This is an important question and one that has not been answered previously. So once bladder cancer gets into the muscle of the bladder, it gains access to the blood and the lymphatic system and that's why cancer spreads to other parts of the body. That's called metastasis. What we know in patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer is that on average about one out of four, one out of five patients already has spread to the lymph nodes. Removing these lymph nodes or a thorough lymph node uh, dissection so to speak really reduces the probability of the cancer recurring or growing again in the pelvis. Even in patients who have spread to the lymph nodes, when you do a very thorough meticulous uh, lymph node removal or lymphadenectomy, then the incidence of this local recurrence is actually quite low, even in patients who have lymph node metastasis. So there's a therapeutic benefit to a thorough lymph node dissection. In this trial, uh, we will be looking at all of that and then, uh, and then asking and answering the question, does even extending that up further you know, help patients live longer. We know that for patients whose cancer has spread beyond the area of the standard lymph node removal, removing more lymph nodes is the right treatment. However, we are not certain that this is the right treatment for those whose cancer has not spread beyond that standard lymph node removal. This trial seeks to understand whether or not an extended lymph node removal is the right plan for each patient. Uh, we're going to do a thorough exploration at the time of surgery. We're going to do the very best we can to rule out cancer in the lymph nodes above the standard node dissection. And then uh, at the time of surgery, the computer will make the decision about whether you get the more extensive one or the standard one. And, and to be truthful, we don't really know for sure uh, if the extended uh, derive, you know, if patients derive a real benefit from that. And this trial will will um, allow us to answer that question for the benefit of patients that come along in the future. With respect to side effects of the lymph node dissection, um, they're actually um, uh, uncommon, but the things that can occur are lymph leaks, and that might manifest by uh, drainage of lymph fluid uh, through the wound or through a drain uh, site, that's actually pretty low. Patients more commonly can get collect collections of lymph fluid called a lymphocele uh, in the pelvis postoperatively. Most of those are completely asymptomatic, don't present, but uh, they can compress the veins and cause swelling of the leg and sometimes uh, uh, and also perhaps predispose patients to developing clots in the venous system in the legs and occasionally we have to drain those uh, postoperatively, and that's typically a fairly easy and standard radiologic uh, procedure. I'm not aware of any uh, study that shows a significant increase in complications simply by extending the node dissection. One of the things that occurs after this operation is that the bowels don't work properly. It's called a paralytic ileus. Perhaps in lay terms you can think about it that the bowels are going to sleep and need a couple of days to wake up. And so it's possible that the more extensive node dissection could result in what we refer to as a prolonged ileus or taking longer for the bowels to open up and function. That could result in a longer hospital stay. It could result in the need for intravenous nutrition while the bowels are recovering. And that's one of the things that we'll look at in this uh, clinical trial. We have no evidence to, to believe one way or the other that the more extended node dissection will affect this in any material way, but our intention is to look at it so we can at least ask and answer the question. The reason that the randomization is done 
during surgery uh, is because unfortunately the, the, the staging tools that we have are not as accurate as we would like them to be for ruling out lymph node metastasis, particularly in the extended uh, field. Once the surgeon has determined that there's no evidence of metastatic disease or perhaps they do a frozen section of an abnormal lymph node and that comes back normal, then uh, the patient will be randomized. So the surgeon really has a game plan uh, for uh, the standard node dissection, the radical cystectomy. Obviously, we got to reroute the plumbing, and so that's another major part of the operation in terms of urinary tract reconstruction, and there's a number of options uh, for that. And so the, the, the plan for how extensive a node dissection I'm going to do as the surgeon is really just one small part of it. And as I mentioned, that's only about you know, 20, 25, 30 minutes of an operation that goes for several hours. The patient can still uh, get any type of urinary diversion that they want. Um, and uh, that, of course, is between the patient and the surgeon. And uh, everything else is really standard of care. There's literally thousands of patients that have undergone an extended node dissection. It's well reported and documented in the literature. And so from a, from a billing standpoint, from an insurance standpoint, the, the coding does change a little bit, uh, but uh, we've never had any issues with uh, uh, reimbursement, and that really doesn't affect things at the patient level. There'd be no justification for denying it because the extended node dissection is a relatively small part of the operation. Some patients will have received chemotherapy as part of their overall treatment plan. We call that neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And that's a standard of care for muscle invasive bladder cancer where patients get uh, three to four months of chemotherapy and then go on to their surgery. Uh, this trial allows for that. It's very important that we included patients who had this so-called neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy because it is a standard of care. And then if it turns out that uh, there's uh, spread to the lymph nodes or more extensive spread to the lymph nodes than the surgeon perhaps appreciated at the time of surgery, and that patient may not have gotten chemotherapy before surgery, they can still go on to get chemotherapy after surgery, regardless of whether they got the standard dissection or the extended node dissection. And so we're fully committed to an integration of treatment with chemotherapy and surgery, which we think is really going to help the patient uh, optimize their long-term survival and control of the cancer. You may ask what the benefits of participating in this trial are for you. While there are a few direct benefits to you, you can be assured that you will receive great care as a result of participating in this trial. You will also have an opportunity to give back to future bladder cancer survivors who will have a better understanding of what the right treatment plan is for them. Benefit to the patient by going on the trial are a number of things. Um, really enrolling in a clinical trial essentially assures that you're going to be evaluated and followed and treated according to a very specific protocol that's been worked out by a number of people who are experts in the disease. For patients on the trial, uh, they can be confident that their surgeon uh, has a lot of skill and expertise, has been evaluated by their peers in order to be able to put patients on the trial, and that they have a large enough volume where they have a lot of experience and by virtue of that experience uh, can do a good job and also they're prepared to deal with the inevitable things that come up you know, during and after the operation that, uh, to protect patient safety. If you consent to participate in this trial, you will also have the opportunity to give consent for the use of blood and tissue samples in future research. 
This will allow bladder cancer researchers to better understand the treatments that should be selected for bladder cancer patients. We're going to be able to ask questions about uh, tumor markers that are identified in the bladder tumor and how they relate to the probability of, <coughs> excuse me, the probability of having cancer spread to the lymph nodes, the probability of them uh, recurring early or late or ever and relating that back to survival. And these are really important questions for us to be able to ask and answer. And the best sort of format to do that is in a, is in a prospective clinical trial where everyone is being followed very carefully, getting the same kind of workup, you know, hopefully standardization of the surgery. And then it also creates an incredible resource for scientists to ask other perhaps exploratory uh, questions. And that's just gonna be good for for doctors taking care of patients, and it's going to be good for patients in the long run. Think it over. Talk to the loved ones and friends. Ask questions of your doctor and your doctor's team. And reach out to advocacy groups like the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network if you have additional questions. When we're talking to patients, I think that uh, it's really important to be objective about what the data show and what we know and what we don't know. And so what we do know is that it's very important that every patient have what we're referring to as a standard node dissection. We're asking another very important question about should uh, patients, should the standard of care be a more extensive node dissection? In order to demonstrate that that's truly beneficial and important to do routinely, then we need to do this clinical trial. Thank you.